Hi girls, uh, my name is Nicole and I'm really excited to be making this video uh, for you for a career month. Uh, big shout out to the Girls at Scuba team. Thanks again for thinking of me and letting me share this message about corals and what I do as a coral educator. And I got a lot of great questions from you on Instagram about what exactly that means. And basically I'm a writer and I write a lot about corals. And how this all started is in 2006 when I learned to dive. On my very first dive, I saw a coral restoration project and I knew, I just had this feeling that I knew it was something I needed to do. And before that, I was living in Canada and one of the things that I loved to do was garden. And you know, I didn't, I came from Canada. I didn't know much about corals, but I saw this coral farm and I thought, wow, that's, you know, something I need to do and something that really interests me. And so, you know, like many of us, after learning to dive, I just got so in love with, with the underwater world. Um, I became a dive master and I became a dive instructor. And what was really interesting to me, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate, <laughs> is that um, I started noticing when I was taking people diving that every time we would come up from the water, you know, you would hear the same thing. Oh, look at the fish, look at the, the coral reef was beautiful, look at the turtles. And, and you know, that word coral reef kind of just became this background term for kind of the background of the dive. And I always thought to myself, why aren't people paying more attention to corals? And, you know, th throughout the years, um, I was always really interested in corals. So that was a message that I was always giving to my divers. And so that was you know, in 2006, and here we are, uh, you know, 15 years later, and I'm still able to teach people about corals. And I think that's where the word coral communicator came from. Because through all those years, it was always my mission to um, show divers, show divers the underwater world, but specifically in the corals. And about five years ago, I started my own blog called reefdivers.io. And the intention of that blog was to show divers and teach divers how to recognize coral diversity. And what I really felt was once you're able to recognize these coral species underwater, it, you, your diving experiences just change. The underwater world come, becomes so much bigger and it's like the whole experience changes. And so I started writing on my blog and different magazines about corals. And I really felt this connection, you know, I was able to really dive into some of this scientific literature and translate that information into, you know, fun blog posts with cool pictures. And that's when someone coined the term, I'm the coral educator. So I know there's a lot of questions about that, you know, what does that mean exactly? And I think, you know, in my own experience, in my own words, it's kind of just that. It's giving, you know, giving exposure, giving corals exposure and making sure that everyone uh, can understand the terminology and, and learn how to recognize these different coral species. So that's what I do. Um, it's kind of at the moment, um, just like many of you, I'm at home in my home office dreaming about those days when we could all be on the coral reef, um, but that hasn't stopped me. I'm still writing about corals and, and here we are, I'm still inspiring divers and, and sharing my story with all of you. So one of the main roles of my job as a coral educator, of course, is to just inspire divers to see the reef with new eyes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a real, <laughs> you, you won't find the profession in a, in a guidebook, coral educator, but it's just something that I've kind of fallen into. Um, wherever I am in the world, wherever I am in my life, it always ends up coming back to the corals. Uh, even today, I'm here to make this video to everyone, um, you know, to share my experience and share how I've, I've come into this path. So, we, of course, with any job, especially with uh, marine biology or coral conservation, there is a lot of passion aspect to it. And there, you know, I haven't always been paid to do this job. Uh, I've written a lot of articles on my blog where, you know, I wasn't being directly paid uh, to write them. However, it has opened a lot of doors for me to be able to share this message to a, to a wider audience, um, like we're doing today. 
and also you know to travel and to go to different dive centers and to be able to share this message with the professional teams there with the with the instructors or the, or the dive masters um because you know i'm only one person and i think everyone needs to know about the corals so it's good to be able to share this message with, with dive instructors and dive masters so that they can also start talking about corals and I, I got some messages here from the Instagram stories and, and that was one of them was, is the career voluntary or, or do you get paid? And I think, you know, with any of this marine biology, marine conservation jobs, there, there has to be a lot of passion behind it um, before you can get paid. So I've been following this passion now for 15 years and, you know, I do get paid now to write for magazines or uh, I've gotten, uh, I've written some online articles that I've been paid to do and I've been paid to uh, speak at dive centers or specifically to do trainings at dive centers to train their staff. So there is a way to get paid to do it, but it has to start with a lot of passion. So as I said, you know, maybe at first, yeah, I wasn't being paid to be a, a coral educator, but it has opened a lot of doors for me. And some of the recent projects I was doing before COVID was working with coral restoration organizations in Indonesia. And we had a lot of opportunity to um, travel to different dive centers and, and set up little programs for them uh, on coral education. And one of the big projects I was working on before this was to actually make a course that you can, that's easy, you know, a course where we can go to a dive center, train the instructors, and then they'll be able to, to uh, share this knowledge with their guests because I, I believe it's just so important. Once we're able to see the corals with new eyes, the underwater world uh, evolves and diving will never be the same way again. So no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I am, it's like I'm always on this path, always on this mission to, to teach people about corals, to help people recognize new coral species. And that's where I think this word coral educator um, came into play was, you know, this is what I'm doing. This is my passion. This is my fallback always is to just talk about corals and, and be there to help educate and, pe and teach people about corals. So, you know, my biggest uh, advice when I uh, meet dive instructors or anyone who would like to get involved in this in this uh, profession is uh you know start working in the dive industry become a dive master become a dive instructor and then start sharing your passion with your students and that's what i did um and it helps you know start sharing your passion with your students get your dive center manager on board maybe you can start offering a little half day course or a little one hour session where you teach someone more about the corals or about the specific marine fauna where you are and slowly slowly uh, you can build up to become an expert in that field and people will start calling on you for those um, skills so i have some questions here from the instagram stories about what it's like being a coral educator and one of the first one was about working hours now, my full-time job is actually as a writer. Uh, I'm a blog writer and I write online. So, you know, these days there's not a whole lot of working hours for a coral educator. But um, typically when I was, um, you know, actively living in the tropics and doing this, I could work anywhere from 5 to 20, 30 hours a week. It just depends on, you know where we are so if, if if i was able to get to a dive center and do some training with their staff you know that might be a week-long thing at working you know full days for 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 seven days a week but that doesn't happen too often um but i when i wrote my blog i was dedicating you know for one or two years there i wrote one article a day for five days so i dedicated two three hours a day to it for many years uh, to get to the point where i am now uh, another um, one of these questions here says, a coral educator, does that mean you teach people about coral uh, and do you do other things too? And just like I said, you know, I have, I feel like sometimes this, this profession is, is just calling me and drawing me back into it because no matter what I do in my life, if I'm, you know, working as a writer or just, you know, working as a, as a web working on the web or doing some marketing or something it always comes back to the corals so i do do other things um 
I wish I could be paid full time to be a choral educator and hopefully someday I will get there. But at this point in time, I do have to do other things to supplement my income. Uh, however, if I was also being a dive instructor at the same time, you know, you could consider it as a full time job. So uh, definitely being a dive instructor or a dive master, uh, you could be teaching people about corals at the same time. So it could be a full time job. <laughs> Uh, another one is why did you choose to specialize in corals more than other marine life and it's like the story I told at the beginning I mean when I first learned to dive I saw the coral restoration project and I totally fell in love and I think that has something to do with the fact that before um, when I was living in Canada you know my hobby and my passion was gardening and so I was just completely enamored by the fact that you could just grow these things underwater I mean I didn't know what a coral was I, well, I knew, but I had never been diving. I wasn't a coral expert by any means, but I just fell in love with that idea that you could grow them like a garden. And that's why I chose to um, specialize in them is because, you know, we could grow them. And then as my career pro progressed, I could see there was such a need to um, focus on growing corals. And it was something that we needed to actively restore and overall in the dive industry there was relatively little information about corals and what was there and what is available was more of like a scientific level and so I wanted to offer simple ways for every diver every dive master from any country to just uh, hop on get online and be able to read and interpret that information uh, another place where do you work do you stay in one place or does your career let you travel? Well, uh, COVID has all kind of uh, got us at home, stuck at home. Um, before COVID, I was traveling quite a bit. I was going around to uh, professional dive shows was a big thing to go to travel. Um, and that's where you can make a lot of contacts. Um, and then I was being invited a lot to Indonesia. I was working in Indonesia and the Solomon Islands uh, in Australia. And, um, you know, maybe we can hopefully you know next year we'll all be able to travel again safely but at this moment luckily we have the internet and I've been able to continue to share that message through these videos or with different articles that I'm writing uh, another one here do you have your own business or do you work for a bigger organization um I stay busy I work for different I work for a couple different organizations um, one of the coral focused organizations is Ocean Gardeners which is uh, based in Indonesia and it's a coral restoration organization that focuses on education first. So I've been able to work with them to develop different courses and different training guides that can help dive instructors and dive masters be able to teach their students about corals. Um, and of course my blog reefdivers.io, um, that's really something that I do independently and I would say it's more of a passion project than a, a full-time job. Oh, another question here. I've never heard of a coral educator before, but I love coral and learning about coral. What advice would you give someone who wants to do a similar career to you? Uh, great question. Um, yeah, coral educator again. It's kind of just a term that people made up for me, I guess. I, I wrote a couple articles about being a coral communicator because I was really feeling like I have to share the voice of coral and I want to help people see the reef with new eyes. And, you know, I was the one writing about corals and trying to really get the message out there. And so I think, you know, that term coral educator is something that just, you know, I just kind of grew into um, after writing, you know, count hundreds of articles about, about the topic. So. If it's something that you want to get into, I would definitely recommend you become a professional dive master or a professional dive instructor and that you start integrating your passion into what you do. So you create your own, you know, find out a little bit about the coral species around your main dive sites where you're working and then start incorporating that into your lessons, lesson plans. And hopefully, you know, you're going to have divers that want to come back diving with you or that ask for you by name. And, you know, then maybe your dive manager, dive center manager is gonna notice that. And, you know, you're gonna start initiating and growing the project from there. Another one, is your career voluntary or you, do you get paid? I'm always under the understanding that conservation work is free. 
I've done a lot of free work, you know, I've definitely, um, yeah, I volunteered, I did a whole volunteer job in Africa, I've done a lot of volunteer work, and um, like I mentioned before, work as a dive instructor and then incorporate this call it coral knowledge into your briefings, into your presentations, and it takes a lot of work, you know, I definitely put in my 10 years or more of work um, as a dive instructor, which isn't easy, and I taught coral stuff on the side or started the blog. I mean, I, I, I wasn't paid for that really, you know, it, it did open doors and open opportunities, but you know, we have to, at least, you know, we feel, I feel like I'm fighting for something that's important. I know that I'm making a difference in the world. I know that I've helped set up coral farms and coral nurseries, which are making a difference. So there's a point when, yeah, you don't want to work for free. Of course you want to be able to get paid, but the longer you spend doing something that you love and your passion, eventually it will lead to being able to get paid for this. Um, another question here is how do you find people to educate? And that's a great question. Um, I honestly just keep writing, keep writing online, keep spreading the message, um, keep saying yes to things like this when people ask me to, sh to share my message about corals and maybe they just find me. Um, I am able to connect with anyone who loves corals and I'm always available to chat with anyone who's interested. Um, I have a lot of free articles online. Uh, we have courses available in Indonesia and I guess it's not so much of me going out and looking for people to, to teach. It's more of here's, <laughs> here's all my knowledge and uh, hopefully you can use that as well. To, to teach people around you about corals because it's, it's not so much about me educating everyone. It's about getting the message out there that corals are living animals. Corals are there. They're not just the background to a dive and that they can actually augment your experience and they can augment the dive and really, you know, change, evolve your perception of the underwater world. Uh, yeah. I think that about wraps it up. Uh, thanks for watching. And of course, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments section below and I'll be keeping an eye there. Uh, you can find me on my website, reefdivers.io. And of course, feel free to reach out to me anytime. And I love chatting with, uh, I love chatting to everyone about corals anytime. So again, thanks for having me. Bye.